An inability to focus is a sickness. It ruins our productivity, our relationships, our work. But if we treat it like an illness, then we can study it to discover ways to cure it. And as I looked into it more, I realized that a distracted mind was actually a symptom of something deeper. It's a result of two conditions that if met, infect our productivity. The first is an idle mind. It's said that an idle mind is a dangerous one. It's one that leads to self-sabotage and crippling insecurity because an idle mind sets the stage for rumination. I noticed that particularly for myself, the default setting of my idle mind was to worry. Even when there wasn't anything to worry about, my mind would create problems to worry about. And if I allowed it to, rumination became a habit. A habit that would trickle into my productivity in every area of my life. Second, a compulsion for comparison. Our brain does this subconsciously to everything that we see. And because of how quickly information is consumed and shared nowadays, comparisons are everywhere. You know, think of the influencers living out our wildest dreams on social media. For that dude you hate who's thriving and now dating your ex-girlfriend. It's almost impossible not to compare ourselves. And the reason this combo is so dangerous is because comparisons provide the endless food for our idle mind to feast on. It becomes a self-sustaining cycle. But if we understand this, we can actually use strategies to take back control of our mind once and for all. And I'm going to share four of them with you. So this first one I learned growing up in a stereotypical strict Asian household. In high school, I wasn't allowed to do much. I wasn't allowed to date girls. I wasn't allowed to get a job. I was told that the only thing I should do was study and get good grades because it would benefit my future. Classic Asian parenting, right? Reflecting on it now, despite them having good intentions, they didn't want me to have to worry about, you know, responsibilities and making money and just focus on school. But ironically, with more free time, I was just more distracted. I was bored. I was idle and constantly comparing my life life to my friends who are out having fun. And so as backwards as this might sound, the first strategy is to add more to your plate to preoccupy your mind, because then your mind will have less of a chance to idle and make unconscious comparisons. Get a job, volunteer at a nonprofit, or join a club. It doesn't so much matter what you choose, but it is very important that you're the one who chooses what it is. Otherwise, it's going to feel like a chore, right? No one likes being told what to do, and definitely no one enjoys doing something they don't find interesting. So you have to choose for yourself. For example, when I was 18, I decided that I wanted to become an EMT. And so I did my own research, I enrolled in a summer program, and I got a job all on my own. And I know it's not that impressive, it's literally what being an adult is, but at my age, it felt really empowering. Like, it was the first time I'd made a big decision by myself, and I followed through <laughs> with it. And as a result, during that process, I was focused. Like, I actually looked forward to learning, and I felt like I was in control. It was like my brain and my mind, for the first time, were actually on the same page. So my point is, it's not just about preoccupying our mind, right, being busy. We have to add some purpose behind it. If there's an opportunity or a responsibility that you can add to your life, then send it. It'll give your idle mind the push it needs to sync up with your ability to focus. The next strategy is to schedule in silence. Now, you might be thinking, wait a minute, doesn't that contradict everything that we just said and create more opportunities for rumination? And the answer is, not if it's done in the way I'm about to tell you. Because I realized an idle mind is only dangerous if it's allowed to wander without supervision. Let me explain what I mean. Think of your mind like a reckless kid learning how to drive a car. You wouldn't let them loose and race through the streets of LA during peak traffic hours, right? That's a recipe for disaster and someone's going to the hospital. It would make so much more sense to find an empty neighborhood or a big open parking lot and sit in the passenger seat with them, right? Let them practice the basics and make mistakes and spin all those donuts so they can get out of their system right now. Scheduling in silence serves as that playground for your mind. Find a comfortable spot and leave your phone like far away in another room and just close your eyes. And and during this time, let your mind wander wherever it wants to go, but make sure you follow closely behind. If it wants to daydream about becoming the next Michael Jordan, let it go there. If it wants to spiral into a self-sabotaging story of how worthless you are and how no one's ever gonna love you, yeah, just let it go. Your job is just to follow along and provide a judgment-free zone to observe and understand what does your mind do in a safe environment. Bring awareness to the way that you speak to yourself. And it doesn't have to be this whole elaborate thing, right? There's actually been really good data to suggest that even five minutes of meditation can offer that release and emotional processing that we need in order to focus. The way that I've implemented this is to schedule in five minutes of silence in between focus sessions. And I'll take a little longer if I notice that my mind is wandering a lot more than usual. This is such a simple practice and it's really helped me with my inattention. Let's move on. 
The thing about our compulsion for comparison is that it operates at all times, even when we don't notice it, right? It puts us in like weird moods or it gives us that feeling of like, you know, knots in your stomach where something's off, but you just can't quite make out what it is. So one of the easiest things we can do is cleanse our digital communities. This includes all social media, forums, and news channels. There are a lot of ways you can go about this, but here are five rules that I personally follow. Rule number one is to turn off all notifications for social medias. There's literally no reason why you ever need to be notified that someone liked your B-Real. Rule number two is I never have more than three social media apps installed on my phone at any time. The more you have, the more opportunity for compulsive comparison. Also, it's like a huge time suck if you have to make rounds checking like, you know, Instagram, TikTok, Threads, X, Facebook, B-Real, TikTok, Venmo. So for me on my phone right now, it's just Instagram, X, and YouTube. Rule number three is to unfollow all celebrities, models, brands, influencers that don't serve you or provide value in education. Rule number four is to unfollow every person that you know in real life that you haven't spoken to in at least one year. And if you're afraid that they're gonna be petty or throw shade at you, then just mute their accounts. That works just fine. And rule number five is to place a 20 minutes a day time restriction collectively for all of your social medias. I know it might seem extreme, but you have to reevaluate evaluate for yourself. What's more important to you? Being chronically distracted and unfocused or seeing what your ex-girlfriend's brother is up to on a Tuesday night? Pretty obvious choice for me. Cleansing my digital communities has been a game changer. And if none of those strategies worked for you, then this one is my favorite go-to. Throughout the day, I like to think my mind builds up emotional baggage and it weighs it down. It's heavy and it makes it harder to focus unless it's processed and handled with. I realized as a man that I'm really bad at identifying what mood I'm in or why I'm feeling off, right? Like sometimes I feel off, like the baggage is overflowing, but I can't really tell what it is. And it's so frustrating not being able to pinpoint what my emotions are. The problem is I used to cope with this using unhealthy escapism. Instead of reflecting on why I felt off, I would just binge Netflix for four hours or play Dota all night. And don't get it twisted, there's nothing wrong with watching TV or playing video games to relax. That's not the issue. But I think it's important to understand that doing those things is not the same as processing emotions. Escapism sweeps that baggage under the rug. And from personal experience, it always comes back at the most inconvenient times, like when I need to focus. And so what's really been effective and helpful for me to decompress and offload that baggage is to create. This can take many forms, right? Making videos, writing, journaling, blogging, podcasting, drawing, any form of expression to get your thoughts down. Express to decompress. I've been a musician for most of my life and I didn't even realize it, but I've been writing music to process my baggage for years. It's kind of funny. Mike's always told me that I write the best songs after I get dumped or I'm going through some serious shit. But there's something about capturing and distilling what's on my mind into some thing, you know, like creating, it's such a good way to deal with stuff. You know, there's finality to it. It's like closing the chapter of a book or sealing it into a piece of art, right? You deal with your baggage, you move on, and you can't ruminate on it anymore. Plus, I think creating is super fun. It's something that's given me a lot of joy. And so I basically go around telling everyone they should create. So since I've been implementing these four strategies into my routine, I've noticed dramatic improvements in my ability to focus. To be honest, I don't know if it's possible to cure our mind of distractions. And maybe that's not the point but I do think it's important to recognize when we're in more distracted states because there will always be more distractions. There will always be more symptoms to deeper problems. And as we move towards more technological society, it's only gonna get more difficult. But I think that technology is also part of the solution. And so the next question becomes, how do I set up that system? What can I use to organize my life and provide clarity? Well, you might enjoy this video right over here then. It's about my complete productivity system in Notion. And I go through all of the inner workings of how I built my extended brain to manage every area of my life, my business, and improve my focus. Anyways, hope you enjoy the video. That's your prescription for your distracted mind. And uh, let me know if it works out for you. See ya.